nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome to the October 7th, 2014 Pulse Falls City Council meeting. Clerk will note that all council members are present and under ceremonies, announcements, appointments, presentations, have a few announcements. October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Nearly 20 people per minute are victims of physical violence by an intimate partner in the United States. During one year, this equates to more than 10 million women and men. So if you or someone you know needs help, call the Police Department Victim Services Unit 24-hour hotline at 208-773-1080. The 5K Zombie Infested Fun Run to benefit the Post Falls Food Bank. Saturday, October 11th, check-in race day at the Post Falls Chamber of Commerce. Starts at 4 p.m. Adults, the cost is $20. Students 18 and under is $15 and you can register at the Post Falls Chamber or Chamber website. This next item is going to be a combination. Uh, it's going to be a tag team between uh, Alan and Joe and I. Running shoes and micro brews. <laughs> Alan can run. <coughs> Joe and I will take care of the latter part. <laughs> Saturday, October 18th, the, fun K, the 5K Fun Run and Beer Festival starts at 2 p.m. at Kiwanis Park. There will be micro brews, music, and food vendors. Pre-register at the rec office in City Hall or online at www.postfallsidaho.org. Registration includes a t-shirt and a unique event medal. Adults 21 and over, ideas required, is $25, includes two drink tickets. Students 13 to 20 is $15 and obviously no drink tickets. This new community event is a fundraiser for the Post Falls Park and Recreation Youth Scholarship Program. If you happen to be in City Hall, stop and see the Avista display in the rotunda. This display is traveling throughout the area and point, points out interesting facts about Avista's 125 years providing power in the Inland Empire. Also, uh, on October 14th, the Post Falls Senior Center Community Care Day from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, there are all sorts of uh, folks who will be there. Avista Utilities will be on hand to answer questions regarding the upcoming winter months and how to save money on your bills along with talking about energy audits and more. Post Falls Police Department will be on hand to answer questions on issues you may have. Uh, River City Animal Hospital Dr. Luce will be on site to give your cats and dogs low ca cost shots. Uh, the Area Ag Agency on Aging Area Agency on Aging of North Idaho will be on hand to answer questions regarding the services they provide along with adult protection information. Post Falls Food Bank will be on site with any questions you have uh, or questions for future needs. Um, Second Harvest Food Bank will be there. Uh, you can bring all your papers to have them shredded for free, etc. So that again, that is October 14th, Post Falls uh, Senior Center, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. There will also be a mobile food bank uh, coming to the area soon, so Second Harvest is, uh, will be answering that, those questions. And those are the announcements. Uh, are there any uh, amendments to the agenda? There are none tonight, sir. Declarations of conflict? With that, would you please present the consent calendar? Item A is minutes from the September 16th, 2014 meeting. Item B is minutes from the September 24th, 2014 special meeting. Item C is payable September 9th through September 29th, 2014. Item D is alcohol license request diversified development LLC located at 3592 East 3rd Avenue, unit <coughs> number 102. Item E is public transit funding agreement with Kootenai County for fiscal year 2015. Item F is a city and acres subdivision plat application. Item G is a Swoboda minor subdivision plat application. Item H is the village at Syringa Gardens second edition construction improvement agreement. Item I is the police department disposal of surplus property, computers, and computer equipment. Item J is the Vistas electric service extension agreement for the radio tower on Rathdrum Mountain. <coughs> Any questions? Alan, you had a question on uh, item. Actually, I have two questions. Okay. 
an item E public transit funding agreement. Being, I'm going to play the new guy card again. I don't really know what our agreement is or how that's funded overall. Um, for the buses that we have um, through KMPO, I think KMPO is the one that heads it up, I believe. The Kootenai <coughs> County has a, each city pays a share based upon population for the matching funds for the federal grant. Is it someone else? Uh, actually, the county runs it. Is it just the county? Okay. And it's run the under city the link county. buses that you see running around. City Link? Yes, it's the City I think Link buses. Was curious about our funding and. Right, so the amount is the same amount that we've been paying for five years now. Prior to that, it was um, 12000 um, mm -hmm. per payment instead of the ten. so it's actually been reduced a little bit. Uh, I think that's just based upon population changes in the Kootenai County area. Cord Lane, Hayden, Rathdrum, and Post Tri Falls, I believe, are the ones who contribute. And the tribe Tri pays a significant portion right. into that as well. And how so much is it now that Post Falls pays? Ten. Our share is ten thousand. It's it's actually twenty one thousand total. It's ten thousand something per pay, um, pay per twice. payment, oh. which is paid once every six months. And how often does that get reviewed? The overall funding of that annually. Okay. So, is there ever a chance that we wouldn't have to pay for that anymore? There's a chance that we wouldn't have to. There's also a chance that we would have to pay more. Okay. Yeah. So when does that get decided? Who decides that? Does the county just kind of decide it, and then we just. Pay it. They send right. Cooney County has a spreadsheet that they drop all the numbers into, uh, along with the contract with the tribe, which I think is due in two years now. I think they're up for, uh, for negotiations. Oh, yeah. And then they send that out to the cities. <clears throat> if you were not to want to fund that, you would at this meeting here actually say, no, we'll not fund that particular contract. And then what would happen? They'd change the routes, probably. The routes wouldn't yeah. include post We'd lose whatever routes we have in Post right. Falls, most well, likely. And as you're probably well aware, the Bus service is a free service, and so they don't collect fares for it. And so this is part of the way that it is sure. funded is through the mm -hmm. different cities. And we've been told that they cannot collect fares and continue to receive the federal grants. That that's part of the grants that they receive. Right. Okay. Linda, you had a question. Um, I just have uh, something to say. We have our KMPO meetings the second Thursday of every month at 1:30 here in City Hall. Um, I believe on that board now there are 12 of us. Um, all of the cities are represented. All of the highway districts are represented. Um, ITD is here. And I've been sitting on that board for several years or was an alternative for Clay and I've been to those meetings for several years. So if you want to know more about KMPO, it's a good meeting, 1.30, second Tuesday of every month. Okay, great. Now I was just, I figured that there was, you know, brighter minds than mine out there that figured this all out. But there were just some questions kind of to John's point of, you know, whether the writers participate in the, the cost. And I know that had come up in the paper before I was on council, so I just didn't know what the answer to that was. But yeah, we, we suggested that and we're told we could not collect. And the original structure was set up through a committee. Um, <clears throat> once the county took it over, then they disbanded the committee. Because I, I sat on the actual committee that started do you have any other questions? I do have a second question. This one for the chief, and it's not that I'm comfortable. I just <clears throat> curious as far as disposal of the surplus property. How do you guys go about doing that, chief? If it's something that we can send to auction, we send it to auction out there on Beck uh, Road, uh, Ryland Auction House. If it's not something that is auctionable, we just dispose of it through the trash. Okay. Depending on what it is. So this time it's a lot of computer equipment and stuff like that? Yeah, so. most of what we have on the list now is um, in-car computers that we've recently upgraded. And we have to pull the hard drives out of those so they're not um, really serviceable for a local school district or someone like that. And so we just send them out to auction. Joe, on the hard drive issue, I noticed in your in list all of the, what I assumed were desktop computers, have a note that says hard drive removed, but there's several laptops that doesn't have the same note. Are the hard drives removed out of those two or...? Everything should have the hard drive removed, okay. so we'll double check that. But anything <laughs> that leaves the office should have the hard drive removed. It, it um, is less expensive for us to remove the hard drive and destroy it than it is to try to wipe it and reinstall the operating system and pay someone to, to sit and do all of that. So we just remove the hard drive, incinerate them, and then just uh, auction off the actual physical uh, computer. But we'll check on that, make sure they're out of the laptops too. Thanks. Any other questions? Not an entertain a motion. Move to approve the uh, consent calendar as presented. Second. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Clerk, please take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. Essong? Aye. Henderson? Aye. Malloy? Aye. 
Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is public, public hearings. We have none. Unfinished business. The update on the cleanup of the property located at 319 West 20th. Captain. Well, good evening. And, uh, Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight and uh, give an update on, on what's been happening up on West 20th. As you know, three weeks ago, we came in here, uh, listened to some citizens who reside up in that area, listened to the police department as well, talk about some of those issues we were having up there and how we were going to combat that. So we were asked to come back tonight, three weeks later, and give a, give a brief update of what's, what we've seen transpire up on West 20th. And uh, you'll probably hear some other um, citizens speak tonight on the same topic. So we'll get started. So up on West 20th itself, get acclimated here. Um, as of last, last council meeting, uh, as we all know, we stood here, talked about what's going to happen. We all heard the Friday. We've heard the Friday ourselves. Um, but as we sit back and talk about uh, the mortgage company involvement, the mortgage company involvement is really with the occupants of the home, and we're not in the, we're not in the eviction business, so that's between the, really between them. Our, our job is to make sure that uh, while they're in, in the residence up there, that they are compliant like everybody else, that they're following the rules, following the regulations that everyone else does. Uh, last council meeting, as you know, uh, you see they're moving stuff out on the left. That's pretty much what it looked like, Don, uh, just prior to them uh, coming here, prior to us coming to the council meeting. On the 29th, about a week ago, we sent uh, one of our officers up there, actually one of our detectives up, and take a lot of photos of the house, the property, uh, and give us another report. Now, we're up there daily regardless. Uh, you'll see that as we go through these uh, the slides. But as far as we're concerned from the police department, we've been seeing uh, major improvements on the cleanup. You can now see the backyard. You can see the front uh, as, as we go through some of these pictures. Uh, so, you know, the, the occupants of the home are doing what we're asking of them to do. Uh, we've drawn some lines in the sands and meeting with them on what we want done and what needs to be done still with the cleanup of the property. So, again, as we, as we speak here, there's the backyard. You used not to be able to see any of it. You, it was littered with clothing, littered with trailers, uh, other miscellaneous junk up against the fences. Um, again, uh, what, we've, what we've been monitoring is watching, uh, you know, the trailer loads moving in and out of there. Uh, taking the trailer loads out. We understand it to be to another location over in the Coeur d'Alene area. We we, we've been told that they have a place, I don't want to say it's Templin Court, somewhere over in the Coeur d'Alene area around the lake is where they uh, have another piece of property. So, <clears throat> um, uh, Again, the cleanup is to, to our satisfaction as far as we're concerned at this point. Um, there is a few more things that we are, we're going to continue to work with them on. Uh, being a nitpicker on a few things that we see in the yard, I'd like to get those cleaned up as well. But, since the last council meeting, there were some uh, things that we wanted to make sure happened. Uh, one was we want to continue several days a week getting up there uh, on a daily basis, making sure that the condition continues to improve. Uh, we've continued our patrols of the area to include foot patrols, and we're having our officers log their time and, and their uh, minutes up there, uh, when they're up there and that type of thing. We've logged in the last three weeks over 200 plus logs from patrol officers have been in that area. Uh, like I said, in the evenings we're getting our SOG group. They're sending me nightly emails where they're on foot patrols in the area. Where we're getting that decreased traffic, we want to make sure that foot traffic coming in and out of there. Uh, we, we've found out that uh, uh, there are a couple of people that will still straggle over to the property because it was once a, a drug house. Uh, you will find people that will try to sneak in sometimes at night, and we want to make sure we get those folks to understand that it's no longer going to be tolerated. So uh, we will catch those once in a while happening. Um, Monday, uh, this past Monday, the 29th, at 6 o'clock, we held a uh, meeting at our police station and invited the folks from uh, West 20th down. Uh, let's hear some of their concerns to kind of get on the same page, same, get on the same playing field as what's going on up there and what we're doing to combat some of the problems. And we'd like to hear how we're doing as well. So it's, it's always good to get citizen input uh, so we can turn around and see what else we can do to apply some pressure up there. Uh, we've installed some devices up there to monitor traffic as well. Uh, and we are uh, recording things happening. We're looking at those. Uh, when we get complaints that things are picked up, we'll go to the cameras and, and look at those. So, um, The home occupants, uh, we, we've had, uh, since the last meeting three weeks ago, we've had 12 calls for service up in that 300 block of West 20th. Out of those 12 calls for service, five of those have been animal related, and rightfully so. The, the dogs will run at large, they'll get outside the fence. Uh, there is complaints that there is more than three dogs, the five dogs, what they had. Uh, they were issued citations for dogs running at large in these past couple weeks. We've issued more than one, more than two citations in the past weekend. Uh, those dogs are now down to three. Uh, the two of them that left the property were Friday at 3 o'clock because we watched them leave. Um, we're trying to monitor that to make sure they don't sneak them back in as well. But uh, we're doing as much as we can on that and that part as well. The other two calls we had up there, one was a found property and one was an abandoned vehicle out front of the house that's been tagged and moved as well. 
So we're, we're continuing to monitor that as, as, uh, as we go, and the citizens have been fantastic about calling us as those happen. Uh, and just real quick in closing, we, we're going to continue monitoring that place. We're not going to drop off what we're doing. We're going to continue till this, till this problem is uh, you know, gone. Uh, what we feel is now the neighborhood is back to somewhat normalcy. Uh, and we're going to continue to listen to the residents up there as well. Every, every time that something happens, I'm, I've met with the residents, whoever I've met with. I know mm -hmm. Captain McLean's been up there, Chief's been up there, and patrol officers have been up there. I really continue to stress just to call us when these things are happening. It, it, sometimes we get emails, sometimes we'll get the phone call later after it's happened. It's very difficult for us to go up and try to enforce some certain things because by law we can't. But, um, and you also really don't want to have the citizens issue a bunch of citations because of potential retaliation. So it's always best if we hear it right when it's happening, whether it's 2 in the morning, midnight, 3 in the afternoon, give us a call. We'll get up there, see what we can do, see if we can't find out what's going on. So uh, we will continue to, mo to monitor that as well. Um, and with that, I'll certainly open up for any questions. I did want to let Captain McLean get up and speak real quick about how his meeting went on Monday, if that's okay. Sure. Thanks, Pat. As Captain Knight said, that uh, we held a meeting on the 22nd, uh, shortly after the last council meeting, and we all know that if you don't have the facts um, and you have a problem going on, that, that potentially that makes that problem even worse. Uh, so the purpose of the meeting was twofold that I wanted. One was to do a question and answer with the citizens that live in that area to help them understand, number one, like the eviction process. Uh, we're not in the eviction business, and there were some uh, rumors going around that the mortgage company had already evicted them. Well, that wasn't correct. Um, the mortgage company has actually foreclosed on their mortgage, but they don't plan on actually doing the eviction process until around the 7th of November. Um, so they haven't even been alerted yet that they are evicted. They know that they're going to be asked to be leaved, left. If they fight the eviction process, it could take up to 150 days for the sheriff to come in and physically remove them from the household. The sheriff handles the eviction process. So it's inf information like that that I shared with them to help them understand what we were going through and what our limitations are. I had a list of questions uh, pertaining to the SWAT raid during the drug uh, incident up there and why it took so long for for us to do anything about the drugs and I had to ex I explained to them the process of, of collecting evidence and, and getting certain buys in that, that we would need to stand up in court. Um, that takes some time. It just doesn't happen instantaneously. Um, it was a very good, very good uh, conversation between uh, the police department and those citizens and, and I was hearing a lot of stuff that was transpiring that wasn't being reported and, and again I urge, like Captain Knight just said, urge them to phone us at the time that this is occurring so we can get up there and deal with it in a more speedily time than, than, than what was happening before. Second portion that I wanted to uh, emphasize them is to try and get a block watch started in that neighborhood up there. If we get more neighbors in and we have one, one specific um, block watch captain that we can report to and give information to and he can uh, disperse that information to the rest of the, to, to the citizens, then we don't have information coming from different citizens that is inaccurate, which causes people to get a little bit upset. So it was a very good meeting. Um, I, I, I was happy with that. I've been up and like Kevin Knight said, I, I go by there probably two or three times a day. I live probably three or four blocks from there. And uh, that's my route. I drive through there every day, twice a day and, and checking to see what's going on. I've stopped and visited with some of the neighbors up there and, and given them updates and um, given them some equipment that would make them feel more comfortable up there. So again, it was very beneficial in my opinion, and I'm, I'm hoping that they felt the same way. Questions? Well, I'd just like to thank both of you. I mean, it's, it's a huge uh, undertaking on your part. Uh, you know, that's what we're here for, but by the same token, 200 logs in a three-week period, that's significant monitoring and or enforcement. So I, I appreciate your efforts. Pictures look like, uh, you know, things are moving in the right direction. I think it's important to note, as you both mentioned, there are certain things you cannot do legally, right. you know, and uh, as a city, as a law enforcement agency. So uh, I appreciate the fact that you are doing what you can do, and we're seeing improvements made. So thank you very much. Thank Betty Ann? I would just like to say that I got a call from one lady that lives up there on that street or right near there, and I didn't catch her name, but she was probably here three weeks ago. And she really emphasized how important it was to finally call the police and I said, you know, if the police don't know what's going on and if the city council doesn't know what's going on, then nothing can be done about it. So you guys already did the right thing. And I think it will help other neighborhoods if they're having an issue too because of that to call in. Correct. And it's difficult for us to do something if 
we don't know what's actually happening in, at, at that time. So urge them to call. She is very, very, very excited. I appreciate the fact that you're going to continue to monitor it as yes. well. So, any other questions, Joe? Have there been any continued reports of harassment between the residents and the neighbors? Uh, a s brief ones, yes. Um, <clears throat> there was some concern about uh, in intimidation when they go and get their mail. Um, so there was the meeting I had personally <coughs> with one of them was to uh, give her a device that would help alert if there was an issue going on that would help her out. Um, getting all the neighbors, again with the block watch, getting all the neighbors involved and aware of everything that's going on. So if you're out of town, they know you're out of town. And if something's going on at your house, they know it's not supposed to be happening and they call us. Um, but since then, we, we, we're seeing a reduction in that. And we're really putting an emphasis on people who are showing up there for short periods of time and finding out why they're, why they're there. And is it safe to assume they're not going to be out by Friday? They will not be out by Friday, more than likely. Well, and again, the, the problem is the mortgage holder's got to be the one taking the test. It's just very le very lengthy process. I, just add one thing that I really want to make comment to the citizens up there on West 20th because they really have been a, a pleasure to work with. Uh, you know, and I can tell you just from looking at the, the occupants of the home that they, they understand that neighborhood has really taken it back over. And, you know, if you go up and meet with these folks, uh, they'll tell you they're all on the same page and, and they're, they were fed up with it as well. So they've actually been a real pleasure to work with. They'll call us when they need something. And I think we've got a good understanding going right now, and I, and I hope to, we can continue that. So When you set an example, uh, kind of set the bar fairly high because I know some of the citizens said there are other areas in town who can or, or will experience the same thing. And I think you've set the level of what will be expected if that occurs. Yeah. Oh, we hope so, so again, thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. And we've got, I don't know if there's anybody willing to test or wanting to talk, but we've got citizens' comments coming up. However, that's for items not on the agenda. So if anyone wishes to talk, would you entertain letting them visit for a few minutes with us on this topic? Sure. sure. Okay. Sir, did you want to speak? You had asked. Name for the record, please, and and uh, I guess we'll let you talk for up to five minutes, but it's not under the citizens' I'll comments be, section. Yeah, sure. um, my name is Chris Loheed. For the last 25 years, I've resided at 306 West 19th, which gives you the backside of this. In other words, I have the fence line to this property, and we've been living it for since day one. Um, I understand that they've cleaned the property and things up, Three things came up this week that reminded us of what we watched with this and how it progressed to get to the point that it did to begin with. Uh, one was, I believe there was 9-11 uh, calls. What night was that, Lorelan? Wednesday night for a fight out back there. Dogs screaming, fighting, profanity, middle of the night. That was followed by Saturday night where the alley was pretty busy. In the past, the way this operation worked was they would use the alley and they would come down that alley and I'm sure you're well aware of their operation when that got a little heated they'd move out front <coughs> anyway we I think Lori counted four cars down that alley Saturday night 11 o'clock 1 o'clock 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock they come up and they come up to the back there and they turn all the lights out and they get the flashlights out I don't think they're delivering cookies it's it looks like they're starting to Take, uh, take hold of it, that they've never really stopped what they're doing. I mean, um, Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, I'm getting ready to have my family over for a barbecue out there. I see another kid riding a 10 speed with a full backpack on coming out of the back of that operation again. And that's how they used to mule this stuff out of there or whatever they're doing. I don't really know. We've only been given so much. All I know is what I see. And this is all too familiar. Um, we've watched this go for 18 months, you know, when they first moved in, things were a little quiet, but when it picked up, it picked up bad. And I just wanted to, you know, I appreciate, and I, I do appreciate very much the police's efforts on this. You've been very open to us. Uh, I phoned and got a young guy on the phone Sunday morning. I don't think I was totally polite about it, but it was, you know, when I see the fear coming from around the other neighbors and see it from my wife, I'm not comfortable doing that so much, you know, and, and I have to bite it because some guy down in Texas doesn't seem to want to move on this very quickly or doesn't realize the extent of it. I'll wrap it up very quickly by saying, I work at a school district in Spokane and I walked through a staff room today and when the principal of that school asked me, how's your, how'd your summer go? And I said, well, we didn't really go anywhere. I had to sort of watch over the meth house out the back alley and they all started laughing 
because they were having the exact same conversation about a house in Spokane that they had to deal with the same problem with. And we started going through, I went through my experience and it was nailed, it was almost bang on the exact same experience they had. Police force did all they could, but these people know how to push the law. And in that case, um, they were, they finally got them out of there. It took over two years to get them out of there. But it was just amazing, the, the similarities. They used boys on 10 speeds with backpacks to get the drugs out of there or do what they were doing. And there was a fair amount of intimidation, subtle, but there. Uh, these guys like to throw M80s and things out the back when they're feeling they're being watched, things like that. So I do really appreciate the efforts of this community and what they've done on this. I just came here tonight to tell you, I don't think they're quite done. Well, please continue to call uh, yeah. and, and let them know, and, and these folks will be we, there. We, we uh, have, uh, the citizens around there finally did start getting together, um, and so we have been keeping in touch with them. There's actually even a little app you can use, a neighborhood app that you can alert one another with, and you know, we can, we can go pretty high tech if we want, but yeah, we have, it has brought us closer together. We do watch each other's properties. Once again, I do respect what y'all are doing, but um, I just want everyone to, be, to take note that from our standpoint, and we're right there, we see it every day, we live with this. Uh, they're still at it to a degree. Well, they'll they'll keep it up. It. The officers will keep it up. All right, well, thank you for your Thank work. you very much. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I believe. Oh, hello. Council Member <laughs> Thorsten has a I question. think one of the challenges is the uh, that alley is a dead end. Because when I was doing my little look about, you know, a month ago or whenever this first came up, I drove down the alley not realizing it was a dead end alley and met one of the neighbors across there. I don't think it was you. Um, that, um, so I met him because I had to turn around. And the only way, well, I guess I could have backed up if I'm better, if I was better at driving in reverse. But um, he let me come in just driveway to back up. But I can see where that, with it being a dead end like that, um, that it's just a whole nother issue. If you had a lot of people in there, are they pulling into your your property to turn around? Um, yeah, it's. I remember Officer Bodman when he was on the council loved dead ends and cul-de-sacs because that was it was them, easier yeah. to catch people. Yep. Yeah. So. That might be an actual benefit, although that it's not convenient. But any other questions? <coughs> Sir? Yep, please. Shelly, you want to reset that? He testified. <coughs> Jim Boyer, number 320 West 20th, right across the street. And I empath I've never got to meet this gentleman until tonight, but I really feel sorry for him. I'm on the front part of it. He's on the back part of it. Your, your efforts are outstanding from the police point. I know that we're kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place on how to get them out of there and what to do. But I've been watching them do the same thing. They have no fear. I don't know if they're just that stupid that they'll just keep trying to, you know, they just keep doing their same thing. I know that they are, and they got all these young kids. I feel so sorry for them, but they, uh, I'm afraid, I've seen a move. I saw him out there the other day in a fit of rage, tear the garage door off the front. Uh, he's very upset. He knows <clears throat> that uh, the heat's on him and I think it's upsetting him. And he's been kind of an intimidating to my neighbor next door to me and we're watching her. And you know, I think I, what I'm afraid of is that I've seen him slowing down. They're not packing the stuff no more. They've stopped. And I, I was out of town this weekend when I heard about this, but they've stopped. It's like it's back to their business as usual. I caught him in Coeur d'Alene at a gas station three weeks ago, two weeks ago, doing a drug deal right in a gas station. I watched them. They know I'm their neighbor. They looked at me. They don't care. But I don't know what else you guys can do. I know your hands are tied. I mean, I appreciate it. Just like it says, I appreciate all you know, the, the concern of this community, but we just got to keep the heat on them. I just want to emphasize that until they're gone. Till they're, we've got to wait till the mortgage company comes, but we got to make it so uncomfortable that they don't want to be there no more. Once we put that much heat on them, maybe they'll leave. Okay. But until then, they're just going to keep doing their same stuff. That's all I'd say. Thank you. Thank you. 
Linda. I just have a question for the captain. I'm just wondering if um, you, you indicated a couple of minutes ago that you had some cameras up there. I'm wondering if um, maybe you put more cameras there, you know, and are, do they know they're there? Right. And it might be a good idea if they knew they're there. Yeah. Well, they know they're there now, that's for sure. But um, well, you said they, it first. No, I know, I know. They, they, know they, they don't now. know where they're at now. Cat McLean and I were just talking. We could probably move some things. And actually, Chris, I gave him a phone call back Monday, but waiting to hear back from him. I actually had a, uh, an email from one of the officers who talked to him, said he lived at 306 West 20th. So I went and knocked on West 20th. I think that's Lori's house. But anyway, um, nonetheless, I've been trying to get a hold of Chris to see if we can't finalize a time frame when that was happening. And what we could do is we, we can certainly uh, send a body up there, put someone on overtime. We can put people in there to make sure we're stopping that traffic as long as we know when it's happening. Uh, there's no doubt we can stop these people. We've been stopping people. Matter of fact, last night, real quick story, uh, we sent some detectives, actually went up and spent some time up there. They see a carload of kids come in, carload of kids drive off, our detectives follow them. Followed them for two or three blocks. We're wearing an unmarked car. They're wearing a business suit like Greg. Well, they pull off. They get out and they confront our detective. Says, are you following us? They said, yep. What are you following us for? Because you just came from a drug house. I said, where are you going? He says, well, we're going to a friend's house. The detective said, we'll follow you there. <laughs> so we're, we're in a, and in the meantime, while they're heading there, unfortunately, they made some traffic violations and got some citations issued to them. But nonetheless, <laughs> that's the kind of pressure we want to keep putting on us. We, we, we will fix the issue. There's no doubt about that. But if we can keep communicating on when the times are happening, We'll put people in the alley, we'll fix this, and it's just a matter of putting those things up. We, talk, we discussed that about the cameras. We, we can certainly move things around and make things happen. But. Thank you, and I again appreciate your efforts, and I'm sure we'll be uh, requesting an update in the not so distant future. So, uh, with that, we'll get into citizen comments. I, I see Chief Stan and Chief, are you waiting to come up under citizen comments? Come on up. And this is for the section of the agenda is reserved for citizens wishing to address the council regarding city related issues that are not on the agenda. And these are not on the agenda, I promise. Mayor and Council, thanks for giving me just a few minutes tonight. Uh, we all know that the weather's changing, so it's time to be indoors a lot more. So it's my chance really to come up here in the fall and talk a little bit about uh, maintenance of your chimneys, you know, having a home uh, fire escape plan, uh, making sure that your batteries are checked. And, and, <coughs> and certainly when we go to do the fall back on November 2nd or 3rd that weekend, it's time to change the battery in your smoke detector. So. Um, you know, this is especially important. We've had, unfortunately experienced a couple of fatalities this last year in fires in Post Falls, and one, and one was directly related to the lack of a smoke detector that uh, really is an early warning device for anybody sleeping in the home, especially for uh, kids and, and people that have uh, issues with moving around very well and things like that. So it's important to make sure that we've got a working smoke detector. So that's my pitch on uh, getting ready for winter. You know, uh, also at uh, Kootenai Fire, we have... For those that have a metal bestest uh, chimney flu, we can actually loan you a device to clean your chimney and it's free of charge. Come on down to the office there at 1590 East Celtis Way and borrow it, check it out, uh, clean your chimney and then bring it on back. Something that we've offered for uh, many, many years. And then the other plug I guess I'd like to make is um, this last weekend we had another um, uh, incident where the uh, Post Falls Police Department used an AED and did CPR. And uh, we are um, very hopeful that the outcome remains positive and hope to get to stand in front of you once again to recognize a few of the officers and uh, the firefighters at Kootenai County Fire and Rescue for really what I think is a premier program uh, in this area um, that has been very successful. And I'm really, really proud of the partnership we have. So that's my couple of minutes for you. And Thanks, I appreciate Chief. We appreciate time. you taking the initiative, especially on the AEDs, to bring it in and uh, get them up and running with our PD. Thank you very much. Any other citizens wishing to speak? Shelley. Name for the record, please. Uh, Lori Loheed. I live at 306 West 19th. Chris is my husband. I'm sorry I wasn't quick enough on the first subject here, but just wanted to give you all an update on, I did get a hold of um, Northwest Trustees and RCO Legal, which is actually hired by the mortgage company that owns the house. And they said that on October 1st, they finally filed in court and served the residents with a, a formal eviction notice. And they have 20 days to respond to it. And if they don't respond, they can get a writ then to physically remove them. If they do respond, he didn't really clarify what happens. Without a legal background, I don't know. So hopefully that's positive. Um, Kootenai County did actually sue them at one point. I don't know if you all know that, um, 2012 and they did win. 
because they had the same problem going on at their Coeur d'Alene property. Um, it was in Bonanza Ranch. Bonanza Ranch. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're moving it back to. I went by there on the way here and you can see it all. Um, but we're in the same county, so I don't know if this starts to pick up again for us, if they can help you with what transpired then. So they've already got something under their belt. Okay. Is that a possibility or do we? I've actually been in contact, as you know, I used to work there, so I contacted the attorney that had been working on that. And so they were able to get it resolved, though my guess when I heard it was being moved was that it was going back there. So we'll see how successful they are. Good. And what happens? Yeah, Roxy, are you familiar with Roxy? I know Community? she's Ms. Webb gonna, very well, yes. She's going to drive by as well. I'm sure she probably won't be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's all I had for now. Again, like everyone else is saying, we just really appreciate your efforts. And um, we'll call. I feel like I'm be calling you 24-7 if I keep calling. But we'll definitely do that. And, and maybe more cameras would help you all because I know you can't be there 24-7. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ma'am. We opened it. Well, probably remember me. I'm Mary Arndt. I live at 316 West 20th Avenue, and the officers have been fantastic for the last three weeks. They have been every time we've called, but my car has got a key mark from the door to the front, and I know it wasn't done a couple of weeks ago. Also, um, I've had threats made against my car and my house. I've had two guys follow behind me and a neighbor stopped them from attacking me or whatever they were gonna do. Uh, we've just had a lot of stuff going on. And so we really appreciate everything the city's doing. We've got to keep it up because it's going to move in every neighborhood if we don't. And I appreciate you guys so much. <laughs> it was just, I do have a camera there and I took it out for a while, but I appreciate you guys bringing it back in. I was also furnished an alarm for my door or a personal device when I walked to the mailbox. I can't walk out my door without the door of their opening. If I walk to the mailbox, there's two to three guys come out immediately and they start mouthing off to me. Most of the time I don't respond. I only have twice, <laughs> but the other day I had uh, when the captain's at my home with the camera and I had two repair guys. Evidently, Brian across the street thought they were all police officers because as the computer specialist left, he's flipping us off, he's screaming at the guy and all of this. I had to call the guy and say, if you're followed, please call the police department and notify him because I wasn't sure they wouldn't follow him. And so it's not just, you know, our neighborhood, it's so many other people are affected and every time you can't tell everybody about this when they come to repair something. So we appreciate all you guys are doing. Thank you so much and keep doing it, please. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's everyone. Uh, new business, we have none. Ordinances and resolutions, we have uh, a resolution and an ordinance. Move to approve the resolution personnel policy manual revised uh, October 7th, 2014. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Clerk, please take the roll. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Henderson? Aye. Hissong? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. And an ordinance dealing with firearms. Move to place the ordinance dealing with the firearms on its first and only reading by title only while under suspension of the rules. Second. second. Motion second for the discussion. Clerk, please take the roll. Malloy? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Hissong? Aye. Henderson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Discharge of weapons. An ordinance? of the City of Post Falls and Municipal Corporation of Idaho providing for the modification of Title IX, Chapter 36, Section 30 of the Post Falls Municipal Code, providing an effective date and providing for other matters properly relating thereto. 
move to a... Would you like some discussion on this? I can perhaps, I see a few uh, looks. We'll get a discussion after the motion, right? You can... Do you need to discuss you, right now if you want? If you want me to... I can answer, stand for questions when you're when you see fit. Because it's it's been approved to read, but we have a right. So we make the motion second, and then yeah. then discuss, right? Either way, you want to do it that way? Might as well. And would entertain Linda entertain the motion then? Move to approve the ordinance firearms to and to direct the clerk to assign the appropriate number, and that it be published by summary only. Second. Motion second. Further discussion. As for the public record, my understanding of the major difference in this. Ordinance, the difference it makes is that it, it basically makes it legal to discharge a firearm within city limits in the course of self-defense. Is that correct? That is correct. It mirrors a change in state law. So it adds additional, um, what would you call it, additional uh, exceptions to one additional exception, actually, which is a person just, it's an exception from the prohibition for discharging firearms within the city. There's an exception now for persons discharging firearms in lawful defense of persons or persons or property. I just wanted to have that said out loud so the people watching know what this is about. Further discussion? Clerk, please take the roll. Henderson? Aye. Hessong? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Next item is administrative staff reports. We have none tonight, sir. Council comments? Okay. Uh, on Friday, I attended the weekly construction meeting for the Spokane Street City Center revitalization project. I had received, just in the course of being out and about, a lot of uh, comments about citizens being frustrated with that. So it was, it was interesting to attend what they have every week, this construction meeting. Uh, one of the things, uh, the end is in sight. I believe the end of October is when they're looking at the majority of that to be completed but the other the other thing was that speeding is still a problem down there and if any of you and I'm sure all of you have driven down there they're very narrow lanes and you have people working you know as well um, so speeding still a problem but uh, all concrete work down there should be done by October 15th so there is light at the end of the tunnel but um, you know, we're having a meeting tomorrow about a, a completely different issue, but the barricade northbound, that was the big one, the barricade northbound should come out probably the end of this week or the first part of next week, because that's the one where people are having to detour around on First Avenue. But so just for those people that have been affected by it and concerned about it and frustrated by it, the end is in sight forward motion is being maintained but drive safe down there because it is a little confusing and there are people working there so chief we've had some patrols down there that's been brought to our attention did they give you any time frames during that meeting that it's worse than others or was it just all the time you know the commute time you have everyone from south that lives south of the river heading north in the morning and then making that same, you know, there's traffic all day long. So morning and afternoon? The morning and the coming home, coming home traffic. And, and I think okay. they've been in contact with the PD, but it just, it really is a safety issue. And I know that, that no one would want to, no one would want to injure inadvertently a construction worker, even though they're wearing the bright and they're being safe too. It's a really close um, pass by. Okay, we'll get some additional patrols down there. Kit, can we get uh, Street Department on City Facebook page? Are, have there been updates posted? Can we get updates posted? And I guess from my perspective, I appreciate the people's concerns, et, et cetera. So, How, yes. However, I look at it's a construction project. Yeah. Uh, slow down. Yeah, and it's inconvenient. It's a pain in the backside, but it's going to be nice, and it's going to take time. Uh, to follow up on that, I received a, a call from a citizen complaining, or not complaining, but expressing concern about Beck Road Interchange, Beck Road and Celtese, they've got the lights up out there. They're all flashing. It's four flashing lights. People don't stop. I'm sorry, four flashing red lights mean stop. And if they weren't there before and they're there now, guess what? It means stop. But uh, I was talking with someone, and he said, I said, what does that mean? He goes, you stop, you don't run them. But they, they expressed a concern, uh, called the uh, called chief, and he got a hold of Jim Porter, I believe, at Streets. They got 
notices or, or warnings posted up out there, and I, I did receive a thank you. So again, another deal where I had nothing to do with it, but you guys did your job and for, be be reasonable. If you see flashing red lights, stop. stop. <laughs> so, but they were afraid someone was going to get T-boned. So again, construction is not pleasant, but it's going to be nice when it's done. So, uh, any any other council comments? That would be the extent we do. We do need an uh, executive session. How long? Um, 20 minutes. Okay. Move to enter into executive session pursuant to Idaho Code 67 23451C to conduct deliberations concerning labor negotiations or to acquire an interest in real property which is not owned by a public agency that no action will be taken and the session will last no longer than 20 minutes. Second. 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 For the discussion. Clerk, please take the roll. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Henderson? Aye. Hisson? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. We'll enter executive.
back in regular session. Is there any motions to come forward? To adjourn. To adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion adjourned. Thank you. Or motion carried. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> motion adjourned.